Given a binary tree, return the post order traversal of its node's values. How can you do that? That's today's video. Let's get into it. Hi everyone, my name is Steve. Today we're going through lead code problem 145, binary tree post order traversal. Again, this is another classic interview question or computer science fundamentals. So let's go through this. Given a binary tree, return the post order traversal of its nodes values. So we're given this tree one now two three. The output is three two one. So first we'll have to understand what does post order traversal mean. We'll have to follow the 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 order of left, right, and node. This is the order that we need to follow in order to make a post order traversal of a binary tree. What that means is that suppose we're given this tree. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This is exactly the same tree that we had gone through for pre-order and in-order traversal of binary tree. So let's see how this how this is going to play out for the post-order traversal. Okay, now let's begin this journey. And in the very beginning, we were only given access to the root node, which is this node, the node with value 1. So we'll follow this order. Left, so it'll go to its left node. Left, okay. It also has a left, so we'll go to its left. Then you attempt to access its left node again, but it doesn't have anything. It's now, so it will go to its left. It so it will go to its right node. It, it always follows this order: left or right node, left or right node. So it try to access its right node. Then this is the right node. Then for this right node, it also has to follow this order: left or right node. Okay, it tries to access the left, and then this one over here it attempts to access its left node again. It doesn't have anything. So, and then it tries to access its right node. It doesn't have anything. Oh, okay. Then it will finally go through the first node, the node itself, where we can add this value into the final output list. Okay, we'll add eight into the output list, and then we'll go back, go back to here. Right. So now we'll try to access the right side of the right child of this node, which is nine. Nine. Attempts to go to its left, nothing. Right, nothing. And then it will try to add nine itself, this node, into the list. Okay, now we add nine. Then it will come back to here, this node. Now we'll add this node, node seven, node seven into the final output list. And then it goes back to here. Then we'll add the node with value four, four into the list. Then it comes back to here, to right. It will try, it will try to access the right child of two. 2 doesn't have anything, so it will go to node. Then we'll add node 2 into the final output list. Then it comes back to here. It will go to its right of 1. 1 is having 3 as its right child, so it will go to 3. Then 3 has a left, so 3 will go to 5. 5 doesn't have left or right, so left, right doesn't have anything. Then we'll add 5. 5 into this node, into this list. And then it comes back to right. Okay, right. Right has 6. So we add six. Six doesn't have any left or right. So we'll just add this node itself, six, into the output list. And then it goes back to node. Node is three, so we'll add three into the output list. Then it goes back to the final last node, which is the root. Okay, then we add node, node one into the output list. That's it. That's, then we finished going through this entire tree. For post order traversal, the last node is always the root because we follow this order, left, right, node, left, right, node, right? It's always left, right, node. So no, the root node is always the last one in the post order traversal. So that's also like a quick trick that you can, that you can check whether your final output answer is correct or not. Then this is the final one that we are going to return. Then we can talk about the time complexity of this problem. It's going to be O n. N is the number of nodes. Because for this program to finish, we'll have to visit every single node. That's the time complexity O n. Space complexity is also O n. That's the worst case because in an extremely skewed tree, it's basically similar to what we talked about for pre-order and in-order traversal. In the extreme case, a tree could be extremely skewed. One root node only has left child. Its left child only has all its left children. It doesn't have anything on the right. Or one root node always has a right child. Right child always has all right children. It doesn't have anything on the left side. So basically a singly linked list put in the binary tree fashion. So that's the worst case. So space complexity is going to be O n as well. But in average case, it's going to be O log n, which the log n is the height of the tree. So in, I say, this example, um, balanced binary tree, the space complexity is going to be O log n. 
That's space and time complexity. Now let's quickly put the idea into the actual code. Let's see how that plays out. So we'll write a helper function. We'll just call it dfs root new array list. This one. Then we'll implement this helper function list integer uh, dfs tree node root and list integer um, then list. We'll call it list. So first we'll check whether the root equals to now or not. If it is now, it's the common case and also the base case for the recursion. Then we'll just do return list. And then what we'll do is we'll follow these steps, which is left and right node, left and right node, left and right node. So we'll always visit left first. What we'll do is then we'll assign, we'll call this recursive function to go through its left side. And then, and then we'll go through its right side, which is exactly the same, but change this one to be its right node. And in the very end, so it's left, right, root node. And then we'll add a node value, node into this list. And then finally, we'll just return list. That's the entire program. Now let's hit submit and see. Oops, this is wrong. It should be root. All right, accepted. Yeah, this is the program. Recursive solution is very straightforward and intuitive. I hope it does make sense. If this video helps you to understand how post-order traversal works, please don't forget to hit the like button. That's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And also, please consider to subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell notification. Right now, we're going through a tree series of problems. After this, we'll go through dynamic programming and then sorting and searching to help people better prepare for their upcoming coding interviews. And also, please leave me any comments, feedback, questions down in the comment section below or any topics that you would like me to cover in the next video. Please leave me down in the comment section below. I really appreciate it. That's it for today's video. See you guys in the next one.